What's poppin' everybody? It's the Sable Fanny 4. The PS5 Pro reveal isn't fresh news anymore, but I just not got the chance to talk about it. And I want to compare it with how the PS4 Pro was received when that was gonna come out. Basically, as far as I know, enhanced, enhanced gaming consoles have always been a thing since the Sega Saturn days. Even you want to go into the handheld side of things, with Nintendo, we had the Game Boy Advance, then we got the Game Boy Advance SP. Basically, you had the backlight. Now, granted, you couldn't put headphones on, but you had the backlight. That was more important back then. With the DS, we got the DSi. That was the enhanced version for the DS. Wasn't much of an upgrade, though. That was actually pretty crap when you think about it. You could download like games from the eShop, but you sacrificed backwards compatibility with the Game Boy Advance games. So that was crap. But anyway. With the PlayStation 4 Pro though, and I guess for Microsoft it was the Xbox One and then the Xbox One X, the situation was pretty different. So when the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One came out, they were sort of already kind of underpowered. Like the leap in technology from PlayStation 3 to PlayStation 4 wasn't on the same level as when we jumped from the PlayStation 2 to the PlayStation 3. That was a notable difference in technology. I mean, night and day difference with the games and uh, you know, nobody could really complain. From the PS3 though, to pre from the PS3 though to the PS4, it wasn't the same situation. The specs in the original like PS4 and Xbox 1, they were already sort of uh, not antiquated, but kind of lesser compared to what you could build with gaming PCs. And obviously at this point with the way technology is, gaming PCs, they're always gonna be the best experience if you want everything to be top end, graphics, performance, everything, and you wanna spend the money. And because of that, both companies thought, hey, we can't exactly give the PC experience, it's gonna be too expensive, but we can give something that's slightly better than the base consoles. Hence why the PS4 Pro came out and the Xbox Series X. For the PS5 Pro though, it's not really the same situation. Like when the PlayStation 5, uh, when the PlayStation 5 came out, I think it was in like 2020, I think so. The leap in technology between the PlayStation 4 and the PS5 was pretty huge. I mean, just the fact that it has an SSD alone, it makes a night and day difference in the loading times and the performance. So it was one heck of an upgrade. It didn't come out underpowered at all. And we all thought, okay, Sony and Microsoft, they learned the lesson from the previous gen. They came out with something that's more high end, so it can last the generation better. That's also why the base PlayStation 5 and Xbox One, Xbox Series S were more expensive than the base PS4 and uh, Xbox One. Damn, it's so confusing saying Microsoft's consoles. But anyway, even the base versions were more expensive. So this is one reason why the PS5 Pro feels more redundant and pointless compared to the PS4 Pro. The other big problem is the problem of pricing. So when the PS4 Pro was gonna come out, before the Pro came out, the Slim was already out, I believe. And even if it wasn't, the PlayStation 4 from its regular like launch, $400, 400 euro, 350 pound UK price, it dropped into 350 and then you could even get it for like 300. Like I remember when I got my PlayStation 4 Slim, there was a special sale at my local supermarket. If you bought groceries for like over 150 euros or something, I think you could buy a PlayStation 4 Slim from them for 300 euros as opposed to 350 or 400 or something. But anyway, the Slim was cheaper. The regular version was cheaper. And that's why when the Pro came out, PlayStation 4 Pro was 400 and then they made the regular one like 350. The prices basically got adjusted. I mean, that's what we're used to and that's what always happens like with games and with everything. When something is new, it comes out at full price and then it gets cheaper as the, the next thing sort of uh, replaces it. Same with cameras too, like my Panasonic uh, VX whatever, when it came out in 2016, I think, the launch price was like $800 or something. When I got it, I got it like 500 euros a couple of years later. So it's standard stuff. I don't know the prices with the Xbox, but I would imagine it's something similar too. Like when the 
Slim or the Xbox One S came out and it could do a bunch of stuff, whatever. For the PS5 Pro though, they didn't like discount the original PlayStation 5, put it at a lower price and then hit the market with the PS5 Pro with the same price as the base PS5. It's just a lot more expensive and nobody's even talking about this, I guess because nobody gives a fuck about Europe, but it's like what? $700 in the US, so $100 more than a base PlayStation 5. But in Europe, it's 200 euros up. It's hella even more expensive than the American one. Now, I'm not gonna pretend I know all the, like the spec differences and what it does better than the base one. I did watch like Mark Cerny's video where he revealed it and explained all the differences and stuff. But it's safe to say the majority of the consumers, like your average everyday consumer, doesn't really care about some sort of minor or maybe major, but it's not really major, graphical or performance improvement that maybe many people can't even tell the difference. To pay like $200 or 200 euros or $100 more and not even have a disk drive too. The difference in pricing is just too much and you don't really get that upfront value. I think I speak for many when I say that us people that use consoles, yeah, we like graphics and we like performance and stuff, but we don't really care if it's like the top shit all the time. If that was the case, we'd be playing gaming PCs, but we want to keep things simple. That's why we play with consoles. Of course, there's the exclusives and stuff too, but we want to keep things simple. Which makes the PS5 Pro be for a very specific niche audience. Like, as I've said, when the PS5 Pro, when the PS4 Pro was going to come out, it was 400 bucks, the same price as the base PS4. So it made sense if somebody didn't buy any PlayStation 4 and they were going to get something, they could have been like, okay, let me get the best one, I guess, when it comes to performance. I, I don't care about spending that little bit of extra money. But we're talking about a mass price difference here. Like, I don't have a PS5. No regular PS5, no PS5 Pro. If I was going to go right now and buy a PlayStation 5, I still wouldn't get the Pro. It's just not worth it for me to pay 200 euros more than a regular PS5, not have the disk drive, just for a little bit of better performance. The people that already have their PlayStation 5 console, most of them, they're not going to go ahead and buy this new one just for a little bit of better performance. You have to be like really swimming in money and not caring or being some kind of enthusiast. That's the only way. And then the last thing that makes this product stink even more is if they came out with this and they also came out with some new exclusive games and they sort of boasted that, yeah, you're going to get the best out of this new exclusive uh, Sony game only from the PlayStation 5 Pro. Like this new Blob one is coming out, you get the best experience with the Pro. But they don't even got that. I mentioned Bloodborne specifically because this is the one game that I have been dying to get another of for so many years and I know that I'm in the same boat as with any hardcore Bloodborne fan. It's almost 10 years at this point. We want a new game but at this point like even if they would come out with a, a Bloodborne that runs in 60 frames per second or it's just a remastered or revamped version whatever we're gonna be happy just to have another excuse to play it. But they don't even got that. They just don't have those exclusive games right now. Like I have no reason. The reason why I don't have a PS5 is because any game that I want to play, which they're not that many, I don't have time to play as I used to when I'm making videos and I got to play Pokemon TCG Live and stuff. But when that specific game that I really want to play comes out, like a From Software game like Elden Ring, a new Bloodborne, whatever, that's when I'm gonna want to buy a new console just for that game basically. Bloodborne is a console seller and Sony should know this. You know, if you're not gonna have the exclusive games and the games that I have a reason to buy the PS5, then I don't care about the PS5 Pro or the regular PS5. It's just sad. I mean, eventually I will get a PS5. Um, there's the Castlevania collection that came out that I'm a bit annoyed it only came out there and not on the PS4. But if I do, it's not going to be the Pro. I don't care about that. Unless it comes down to the same price as the regular one. Then there's going to be value. Same price, we're going to get the better one then. 
Anyway, those are my thoughts. That's the comparison. This is why I think everybody hates the PlayStation 5 Pro, but the PlayStation 4 Pro didn't get the same amount of hate. It's just a completely different situation. And I don't know if Sony like knew that. They thought, okay, we're just gonna do the same thing as with the PlayStation 4 Pro since nobody complained. Jack up the price and we're gonna get away with it. It just doesn't make sense to me. They should have known everybody was gonna complain and it wasn't gonna be received well. Okay, and rant. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel, leave a like, share the video with your friends, and I'll see you guys next time. What I yep.